Our health reporter, Nicola Hill, is here to explain what this all means. Uh, Nicola, what do you know about this gene and how many people likely might have it? It's really interesting research, isn't it? And it actually depends on where about in the world you live as to whether you carry the Neanderthal gene. They reckon about 50% of people in um, parts of Asia have it, but only about 16% of people in Europe. Now, I mean, I must admit, I had to look up a little bit more information about Neanderthals. Um, apparently, they lived between 400,000 years ago 40,000 years ago and at some point during that time they overlapped with the modern humans that most of us are descended from and they interbred which is why some people have this gene and other people's don't. Parts of Africa for example very few people have this gene at all and if you do you only have a tiny amount it's only a tiny amount of your genetic makeup but it does seem to have some sort of impact on your susceptibility or protection against various illnesses. Now, I spoke via email this morning to Professor Hugo Zeberg, who is one of the authors of this study. He's based at the Karolinska Institute in Sweden, and that's where they're carrying out this research into the impact on Neanderthal genes. And apparently, if you did have it, back in historical times, you got protection against cholera. And that's why they think it's such a common um, gene in parts of Asia. And that's why people who had that gene survived cholera then. But apparently it does make you more sensitive to pain and to sense of smell. Now, he said that when he sort of discovered this um, susceptibilities to severe COVID, he was extremely shocked by this. But it does seem that it makes people three times more likely to get um, worse symptoms of COVID-19. And certainly in the UK, people who have a Bangladeshi origin are twice as likely to have severe um, coronavirus than people without. Now, there has been some criticism of this research, as there always is with science, with um, people saying perhaps this is a bit too simplistic. Um, Professor Mark Masler from University College London says that there's a lot more that goes into play with people's susceptibility to severe coronavirus. You've got whether they come into contact with a lot of the virus, their age, their underlying health conditions. But this is certainly an extra bit of information that they're going to study in more detail and is perhaps just another nugget as to who is and who isn't susceptible to severe COVID-19. All right, Nicola Hill in London. Nicola, thank you so much.